All right, so today we're going to use Maxwell Denoiser on a frosted glass material. Now, about glass. Back in 2015, on June 25th, when Tani published his game-changing tutorial about creating a perfect glass in Maxwell Render, everyone on this planet started using glass materials. So here's our material look like. So you can see there's a glass and the bubbles, and because, you know, everything is better with the bubbles. It's quite noisy, as you can see. Um, the render took me about 9 minutes and 55 seconds. It's not didn't hit the 10 minutes mark. And it reached simpler level of 10. Now before we start uh, applying the denoiser, I want to show you how the scene was set up. Okay, so um, here's our scene. As you can see, it's pretty much the same as it was um, with the Godzilla. It's the same plane, uh, same camera with the same camera settings. Our object is on the same uh, position. So we have uh, same light panels. So this is our key light. This is our details light. This is our um, rim light. Uh, and I've added another extra light just for the refractions. Now, in terms of the image-based lighting, yeah, I'm using different uh, HDR. As you can see, it's a little bit darker, a little bit, um, just a little bit different. I can see there's a guy here. So it's some sort of like an office environment. Material-wise, I'm using the uh, same material for the table. It's my lazy material with a bunch of diffuse options. This time it's not wood, it's ash. So that's what gives me this, this gray kind of marble stone type of look. And same gloss layer for the roughness. Here's our glass material. As you can see, it's pretty um, straightforward. In fact, I've used the material assistant for the base and then convert it to advanced material or layered material and just tweak the bit. The main thing that I tweaked is, was the attenuation distance or, well, yeah, and transmittance color. Because I wanted to have this uh, green look and since the object is pretty small, I had to reduce the attenuation distance so that we would pick up some of that beautiful green shade. Yeah, as you can see, the roughness here is a 16%, which gives us pretty frosty look. Now, bubbles here, besides being a pretty cool thing, they actually serve a purpose here. It gives us the, the, the sharp element, because everything else would be quite smooth once we start denoising it, but we want to have um, sharp areas in our render so that it's not everything is just smoothed out. Right, so and see, we have this some um, bubbles that are closer to the to this to the surface to the side of the cat. Uh, they are a little bit sharper than those that are deeper inside of the cat. Hmm. Anyway, so that's our material. Everything else is pretty much the same. The camera settings are the same as they were in the previous scene. Now for the bubble material, as you can see, there's, um, I have this cat and bubbles, and there's a mesh rep for mesh. This, uh, I made these bubbles in my using mesh. Uh, it's quite a lot of bubbles here, a little less than 600. In order to do this bubbles inside of the glass in a, a correct way, uh, we have to use nested priority or nested dielectrics as you know it. And in our case, obviously the nested priority of the glass would be lower than the nested um, priority of the bubbles. So the higher the number of your nested priority, the lower it's in priority cube. Here's the bubble material. Um, you can see that the nested priority is zero. So bubbles, they practically cut out a little spheres inside of the glass material. And that's what creates this effect. Otherwise, the, their, their index of refractions would be mixed and overwritten by the material that is on top, which is not correct. So as you can see, this is the very simple um, material for bubbles. I didn't want it to have like, too much of the refraction and even a reflection. And uh, yeah, it has a little roughness here. Um, very, very, very straightforward. So it's two different glass materials. One is just lower index of refraction. So uh, this is the default settings and this is how it looks by default. As you can see. In general, it is not like very bad. It's okay. It's a uh, it smooth things out, maybe too much. But that's the default settings. And we, we knew from the previous video that default settings they sometimes they could be a little bit overkill. So let's then um, 
do a screen grab of this. So this is the original render that came out of Maxwell without any denoising or anything whatsoever. Uh, I can't say it's very noisy. It has this, uh, definitely has some grains and some, some, some noise, especially like in this darker areas and then where the blurring is occurring, right? Okay, and as you can see, I've laid them out here and I put the, the, the naming um, of each uh, layer so we would know what we're looking at. So now this one is um, what default settings gives you, uh, which is not bad in general. It, it smooths things out and in some cases you probably want to do that. Um, like for example, like in this area, which is out of focus or should be smooth, should not be grainy, doesn't have much of a sharp details that we want to focus on. I mean, it definitely has some wings and everything, but that's not what we're here for. So that's the default settings, right? Then I reduced the feature influence um, to half. And that's what we see here. Uh, and if, you, if we compare from um, you know, default settings, which is feature influence 0 0.6 to 0 0.3, you can see it doesn't do much of the uh, change. It changes something, but not much. I mean, it does make things a little bit sharper on the edges, especially on the edges of some features. Um, let's see here. Yeah, I'm unchecking and checking back in. So it does give us some change, uh, but not a drastic one. Now what I did next is I've reduced the feature influence even more to 0 0.15, uh, which is a quarter of the default settings. And now as you can see, that gives us, I mean, we're going to compare it to the default settings. Uh, that gives us um, a little bit more of the visible result. Now definitely things are becoming sharper while we're losing the noise, but things are getting sharper. Um, especially in the areas where a lot of things are going on, like, like, like this head. Yeah, you see how the, how the highlights here, um, reflections. Um, so that's the uh, default settings, and this is uh, the reduced feature influence, while we're still um, kind of staying out of the noise. So that's good. Now what I did next is uh, I kept the feature influence parameter at the same range, but I also reduced the color influence to 0 0.2. And that's what it does. As you can see, it it does very interesting um, thing in our case, it, it, it actually helps with sharpness um, on some of the very uh, subtle, very, very small details. Uh, so that's what we're comparing to um, the original uh, value or the full value of color influence with the reduced value of color influence. And if we compare this uh, new um, uh, what do you call this version of denoising parameters with the original denoising parameters, you can see how this um, just enhances everything. Of course, it all depends on the on your situation, on your model, on your amount of details, on the textures, on the lights, on everything. Um, but in my case, it actually brings some brings back some of the sharpness and some of the detail and surface definition without bringing too much of the noise. It does start to uh, bring a little bit of this um, irregularities, which are not part of the surface because there is no bump texture or roughness texture or anything like that. So it's just a pure geometry. So this uh, should not be too noisy, but it starts to bring some of them. You see, it feels like it's almost like a, like a, like a bump or something which is I'm fine with because it doesn't look like noise, but it looks like your regular surface, which is acceptable. So I've kept the, um, the feature influence at 0 0.15 and color influence at 0 0.2. And I reduced the final pass from 0 0.45 to 0 0.2, um, almost twice. And you can see how that uh, generally reduces the, um, the amount of denoiser 
uh, applied. So in some cases, we started to see some of the original rendering uh, pieces. And things, they do get a little bit sharper in general. Not really much, but right. So that's what it does. But um, that's that's final pass. Okay. Now then, the other thing what I did is uh, I put all parameters at the zero point fifteen, all of them. Um, and that's what it did. Now let's see. I can see. You can see the noise and some artifacts. They, they started to appear here. Um, it definitely brings some sharpness, for sure. Um, and the surface, not on the edges, but um, that's that's the drawback of reducing the denoiser and going back to uh, original rendering. Uh, original rendering here. Uh, but see, we went quite far. And I mean, personally, that, that's, my, um, that's my view of things. So I'm okay with some, some amount of grain, some amount of noise, because that is very natural. That happens everywhere in the film, in the photo, in the video. So that's, that's normal. And that's, in fact, that's essential for us to have some of the noise in the shadows or in some uh, half tones. So I'm fine with that. Okay, and then the other thing what I did is, um, so I used the same parameters, um, values as 0 0.15, but I also reduced the filter radius in half. So the default settings for the filter radius are 10. Um, in our case, I reduced it to five to see how, how that would affect the, the smoothness of, of the denoiser um, procedure itself. And you can see how it, it really starts to break it. Uh, especially right here, you see the, 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 the reflection, the highlights here are becoming a little bit, I don't know if you guys can see it in the video, but it becomes a little bit um, like choppy, like spotty, it, instead of having the, the nice and smooth, um, like even reflection, it becomes a little bit of a, like a, like, more for spots and areas rather than one big smooth reflection. So that's what I thought not really, really good. I think I'll stick with the um, with with this version of the parameters where the feature influence is 0 0.150 um, and color influence is a 200, 0 0.200 just because it has the right balance between the the, the sharpness and the smoothness. And in the next video, we'll work with the textured materials. So we'll see how the denoiser performs on something that have fine little details. And I'll see you there. Cheers.